What is up everybody, I am Legend with Ditto Music and today we're talking about how to make money as a music producer. And I would like to guess that if you're watching this video, you're a music producer yourself, which means getting your hands on a free keyboard probably wouldn't be too bad of a thing, right? That's why today in this video, we're giving an Akai MPK Mini Mark III MIDI controller. All you have to do is be subscribed to this channel. So hit that subscribe button down below and leave a comment letting us know what your favorite way to make money as a music producer is. obvious, which is going to be streaming royalties. Now, this is one of the most obvious ways to make money as a music producer. Even though you're not an artist, you don't have lyrics to your songs, you can still put out your instrumentals on streaming platforms like anybody else. Now, of course, in order to make a livable income from just your streams alone, you're going to have to build your audience up to a level to where you're getting thousands upon thousands of streams. This is not impossible, of course, but it is something that takes a little bit more time than some of the other options on this list. On the flip side, because you're already producing music and it's so easy to distribute your songs, this is one of the easiest ways to make money from your music. Just be sure to release your music consistently because that does trigger the algorithm in Spotify and all these other music platforms. So when people find these playlists with their favorite artists on it and they see your songs next, that could be a way of discovery. And the beauty about being here on this channel is you're in the right place because you can use Ditto Music to actually release your songs to streaming platforms worldwide while retaining 100% of the royalties that you make from your streams. So if streaming income on your songs is something that interests you, be sure to check out the link down in the description to sign up for Ditto Music today and try it for 30 days for free. Way number two is to sell your own beats and samples. It's no surprise that this method has been around for decades on the internet. Selling your own beats, your own sample packs, your loot packs. This is a major way that producers make money online outside of just streams on their songs. You create the samples, the loops, or the beats. You host them on a website like Beatstar. Airbit, or maybe Shopify if you're selling your own kits. You can do it over and over again. And this is one of the major ways to build residual income, which is income that comes to you even if you're not working. You've done the work once and you just can repeat the process of selling this thing over and over again. Some producers undercharge while other producers overcharge. You wanna find something that's kind of in the mid range, but is a price that you're comfortable with selling your art at. After all, you're the musician, it's your art and you determine the value. Now, way number three kind of goes along with way number two, which is produce for other artists. The reason I have these two separate is because one is more like leasing beats that you've just made in your free time and you're just selling stuff that you've already have on hand. Producing for artists is kind of like hands-on work with that client to dial in exactly what they need. The beauty about producing custom work for people is that you can typically charge way more than you can if you were to lease a beat because you're doing the custom work that they personally want. Usually this means you're taking more time, you're being more observant about their needs, and you're not just creating something because you feel like creating it. Another perk to custom producing an artist is word of mouth. Granted, somebody can tell other artists and relay the message about your work if they buy, you know, a lease track from you. But it's more likely I feel that someone would share their experience about your work as a producer if they've personally worked with you one on one. This is kind of like a way to build your clout, to build your presence in your industry, in your niche and in your area as a producer. So this is a good way to kind of expand your territory. Way number four is going to be freelance work. With freelance work, you have a few different resources that you can use to kind of build up your clientele. And that would be Fiverr.com and Upwork.com. There are a few others out there, but I'm not gonna sit here and name all of them. But the idea is simple in that you just sign up for one of these accounts on one of these websites, or maybe you just offer the services yourself on your own and you see what people need done for them. And then you upload or you give links to examples of your work. So songs that you may be released, uh, beats that you produce for another artist, or maybe a song that you mix and master for somebody. And in these marketplaces, people can search for your specific qualifications, check out your list of previous work that you've done to make sure that you are fit for the job. And then of course they'll hire you and you can make easy money like that. And the best part about freelancing is there is no long-term commitment. So you're not you know, signing up to go to a job every month morning at 6 a.m. You're not actually being hired by somebody to work for them for a long period of time. You can step out of freelancing whenever you feel like it because it's whatever you want, whenever you want. Now, way number five is going to be mixing and mastering. This is something that I do actually to supplement my income here on YouTube, as well as the music that I make for, you know, different artists and things like that. When I say that there are so many people out there who have no desire to learn how to mix their own music, I am not 
lying. There will always be a market for people who need their songs mixed and mastered. And so if you're the type of producer who's built up enough of a knowledge to know how to mix and master quality music, then you may want to offer these services to artists or even producers out there who need a helping hand. Just remember before you commit to anything, there is a difference between mixing and mastering. So you probably shouldn't mix and master if you don't know the difference between mixing and mastering, to be totally honest. Way number six is going to be if you own your own studio or you have a location where your studio resides, like I do here, you can rent out your studio to different artists who need to record but don't necessarily want to use their own equipment because it might be, you know, low budget or not of a high enough quality. You can rent out your studio to producers, to artists, to groups, uh, bands. It doesn't matter. Whoever needs your working space with your equipment, your computer, your up to date M1 Pro, MacBook, whatever it's going to be, people will pay you money to rent your stuff. Just be sure that as you're going out and finding these people, People, that they are people you can trust with your equipment or make sure you're there with them as they're recording because you know you know way number seven is going to be one way that i actually want to get into myself and that is sync licensing if you don't already know what sync licensing is a really simple explanation is basically all the music that you hear in media like movies tv shows netflix shows commercials things like this the good thing about sync licensing is it's not dominated by like huge artists they cost too much <laughs> and these companies that want to sync music for their shows often want to spend as little money as possible so that's when they come to little old people like me who don't need three million dollars to sell their beats <laughs> and once again if you're having problems finding out how to get your music synced by yourself Ditto Music does offer a music publishing service as well with Ditto Music Publishing you can get your songs that you distribute through Ditto pitched to all these different executives from Netflix to CNN BBC and and whoever else that they can find. The key is getting yourself out there in the first place to be heard. Because if your music is not sent out to be pitched to these people in the first place, of course you're never gonna land a sync licensing deal because your music is not being pitched around. So you have to get publishing first. But just know that when you do, and when you finally close that deal, oh boy, oh boy, it's gonna be looking real nice in that bank account. Way number eight is going to be doo -doo -doo, start a YouTube channel. <laughs> so there's a few ways you can make money from YouTube as a music producer or an artist. One way, the most obvious way, is advertisements. The more you upload, the more views you get, the more money you get paid because advertisers are running ads against your videos. The next way is sponsorships or influencer marketing. This is where a company reaches out to you because they like your content or they feel like your audience suits their product the most, and they will pay you to talk about their product or to do a demo, uh, a review, anything like this. You've also got live streams on YouTube, which is a big thing that I've been doing as of late, where people will come in, submit their song for $25 to $50, and the producer, the person in the channel, will review that song and tell them how they can make it better. As someone who's done this personally, I can say that this is a really good way to make an income from YouTube and social media in general. The thing is, you do have to have your expertise there to know what you're actually talking about, because if you don't know what you're talking about and you're just kind of like saying, you oh, know, this is cool, people are not really going to want to, you know, submit their music to you because it's going to be halfway done. There's so many things to do on this platform, you just have to find your path and your niche. Way number nine kind of comes with YouTube as well, and this would be teaching and courses. The reason I say it kind of goes with YouTube is because a lot of what I do on YouTube is teaching <laughs> and courses, but it's done, you know, in YouTube videos. Videos. So instead of needing to get like 100,000 views on a video to make a sizable portion of money, you can sell a course instead for a flat rate fee over and over and over and over. And that's residual income that can continue to come as long as that information is relevant and viable. So whether you want to do something physical, something online, something in a group or something solo is up to you. But just know that the money is there when you want it. Last but not least, way number 10 is going to be selling merch. I'm actually wearing somebody's merch on my... <laughs> Now, of course, this depends entirely on what you want to sell, whether it's sweaters, beanies. What else do I have? Pants. <laughs> but just things that people can buy that remind them of you or your brand, who they are as a musician, as a producer. Now, with the artwork, if you're not artistic like me, <laughs> you can find somebody on something like Upwork or Fiverr.com to design your t-shirts for you. Or if you have a friend that can do that as well, dip your toes in another monetization pool. But I think 10 ways is enough for this video. So if you guys found this video to be helpful, be sure to leave a like and drop a comment if I missed anything. 
making or if you have any favorite ways to make money as a music producer yourself. And don't forget when you do this, you'll have a chance to win that Akai MPK Mark III that we're giving away here in today's video. Thank you guys for watching. I hope this was helpful. And as always, stay legendary. I'm out. Oh.